بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل اینڈ آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ ویل اینڈ گڈ اینڈ ویز دی پریویس ویڈیو آئی بلیو ایف ان اے لٹل بورنگ اے لٹل لانگر ایم سوری فار دیٹ اگین آئی ٹرائی مائی بیسٹ ٹو ٹو کور دا کامن اے میٹر ان دس ون ویڈیو اینڈ ویز سو کامن اے میٹر کنفیگریشن واٹ ووڈ دس مین دا اے میٹر ووڈ بی کامن ٹو دی ان پٹ اینڈ دی آؤٹ پٹ سائڈ سو لیٹس ڈرا اٹ لیٹس start it so let's say this is my base terminal this is my collector terminal and this one is my emitter terminal so okay so the arrow i have drawn so this is an npn transistor again in the previous also i believe i talked about the npn so now what would be the case you can have a resistance or you can just directly name it like this fine directly grounded similarly you can have a resistance associated with the base or you could just directly say the base emitter junction is forward bias so p has to be connected with the uh, p has to be connected base emitter has to be forward bias right so yes so this is uh, uh, this is a forward bias so have a look i just did not mention the uh, the the resistance by intent so to tell you that this would now be a vbe you could say like this or if i mention the resistance if i mention the resistance as rb for instance so now this i would write at the biasing potential which is giving me the biasing of b so have a look the emitter has been grounded so we would be interested at the b potential so the b potential has to be positive similarly over here the collector base junction collector base junction has to be reverse biased so have a look the emitter is already grounded so you would be interested in the collector terminal only if you put a current limiting resistor rc over here the collector has to have a negative charge the collector has to have a negative no it has to have a positive again it has to have a positive negative and this one this supply would be known as a vcc why because this is biasing the collector terminal so the collector is n so it is n is to p side n is to positive side so this has been reverse biased if you do not put the resistances you could directly name this as v uh, bc and vce and whatever is the case we want to operate it actually in the active mode so at this side you would have the input and at this side you would have the output whereas the emitter will be common vbe would be based to emitter based to emitter would be vbe the collector to emitter is vce where you can also have vc uh, vcb you could also have a vcb right or a vbc or whatever that is vcb or what or vcb depending on the on the on the larger value vbc or vcb similarly you can have the direction of the currents for yourself as well depending on this positive polarity so ib would be inside similarly ie is outside and ic would be inside again so this is for an np in transistor right now the current relations you know very well again ie is equal to ic plus ib this is the most important the next is that you have ic is alpha times ie plus icbo so let's say i put this over here so ie becomes equal to put two in one right 1 into so 1 into let's say i am interested in ic over here because ic is my output current so ic becomes equal to what alpha times ic plus a ib and then plus icb o isn't it like this it is so now you can have what you can have it as alpha times ic plus alpha times ib plus icbo you can have 1 minus alpha common to ic 1 minus alpha common with ic is equal to alpha times ib plus icbo and now you can divide by this thing ic is equal to alpha over 1 minus alpha times ib plus icbo isn't it like this it is Uh, no, 
you have to divide it over here as well 1 minus alpha this alpha divided by 1 minus alpha is again a DC current gain which is represented by another factor beta beta is equal to alpha over 1 minus alpha which is again the DC current gain and in this case it is the current gain of the common emitter configuration alpha is the DC current was the DC current gain in the previous video was for the common base configuration over here we have it with the with this configuration so IC becomes equal to beta times IB and plus you have so I see we've got another relation you have a beta times IB and then plus you this would be a beta plus one times I C B O beta plus one you can do it how is it now beta changes with alpha okay beta has a significant change with respect to alpha beta has a significant change with respect to alpha so have a look beta changes significantly with respect to alpha say alpha is have a look i have got two values over here if alpha is 0.98 this would imply that beta would be 49 and if alpha is 0.95 beta is 19 alpha is 0.95 beta is 19 so have a look it has got quite a significant amount of change the range of beta is given in the book it's from 50 to 400 50 to 400 we'll check it anyways so I see is beta times O plus now this current beta plus 1 times ICBO they name it as ICEO beta plus 1 times ICBO is named ICEO and why is this so this is for the common base configuration CB we were using for common base so we name it over here as ICEO for the emitter for the common emitter configuration now again I uh, CEO would be very uh, small as compared to the beta times IB right so which is very small as uh, less uh, let, me, let me just write it over here that this would be small as compared to beta times IB so this implies what that you have got your IC to be approximately equal to beta times IB so which means that from here you can calculate the value of beta this would be equal to IC upon IB. IC upon IB. These are the DC values. For the AC values, you would have a change of IC, change of IB. Similarly, over there for change alpha AC, you would have change of IC, you would have a change of IE. Right? Yes. So, this is it. This is the current amplification factor again. So, the common emitter configuration works as a current amplifier common emitter configuration the most important use is as a current amplifier normally the transistors work as voltage amplifiers but this amplifier is a common is a current amplifier why because the value of beta is quite large ib is the input current ic is the output current also the leakage current this uh, is quite large as compared to the to the what to the common base configuration why because it's getting multiplied by quite a big factor let's say the reverse leakage current is five whatever the units are right in the common base configuration and this is the same icbo five and it's multiplied to let's say 100 beta is 99 plus 100 so this becomes 500 whatever the units are so which means that the reverse leakage current is more dominant in the common emitter configuration than the common base configuration yes yes is that clear it is input characteristics input characteristics would be what input characteristics would be the graph of the input current versus the input voltage so the input characteristics input current is what ib input voltage is what vbe so let me draw it vbe ib milliamperes 
IB versus VB we have a look this is just a forward bias diode NPN so this is a forward bias diode just the forward bias characteristics barrier potential is achieved and you have what you have this value now but this would be for a fixed values of the output voltage VCE again for fixed value of a particular VCE now if you change your VCE what would happen you should have the effect on that as well so let's say we see it variation with respect to VCE so that is again your base width modulation or the early effect variation with respect to VCE so that would come from your early effect and the early effect is what that is the base width modulation you already saw that as the reverse bias potential would increase the the the, the the penetration into the base would decrease would increase let's wait for the azan okay so what was the base width modulation so this is an npn transistor so what happens is you saw that this was reverse bias this was so n was positive p was negative right you have electrons over here you have holes over here or what is the thing you have uh, positive ions over here you have negative ions over here right if you increase the reverse bias potential so this means what the depletion layer increases if the depletion layer increases it penetrates more inside the base region which is already thin so it becomes more thinner so the recombination chances further reduces if the recombination chances further reduces the IB current would further reduce isn't it like this it is it is IB current would further reduce so have a look if we see what is this VCE if VCE is increased this implies that the width of the depletion layer would increase which implies the W effective would decrease which implies that recombination would decrease and if recombination decreases the base current would decrease you can have it in this way Recombination has decreased, so the electron supplied by the battery has decreased, so the electron has, so the current has decreased. Or you could say that they would directly go into the other region. Or anyways, we'll see that. So IB has decreased. So with increasing VCB, IB would decrease. So if this is VC1, VC2, VC3, so have a look, VCB1 is less than vcb2 which is less than vcb3 and let me check if i have drawn it correctly 5 10 20 5 10 20 yes yes so these are the input characteristics now the output characteristics so for the output characteristics what would be the case the output current versus the output voltage so the output current is IC, the output voltage is VCE. So the relation for IC is this one. Independent of the value of VCE, isn't it? It is. So what can you have? You can have approximately linear curve, but you have it like this and I will explain. I will explain this region also, I will explain this also. VCE from the equation does not have any effect, but again coming to this base width modulation. You have it, okay? Depends on the input current IB. So IB increases means that IC has increased. IB increases so IC has increased so these would be for different values of IB okay as there we have for fixed values of VCE over here we will have for fixed values of input current or fixed values of IB so over here if IB is 0 IB is 0 you only have a beta plus 1 times ICBO so this is this is for IB is equal to 0 and you can have multiple values. Now when IB will increase, IC will increase. If you neglect the early effect, if you neglect the early effect, 
so what do you have is that if ib increases ic increases right this would be the curve if the early effect is ignored if the early effect is ignored but if you have the early effect which means on increasing vce ib will reduce and if ib reduces ic will reduce if ib reduces ic will reduce and that is it that is it right yes so in the active uh, and again i miss the input and the output resistances so anyways i will just write it over here the input resistance is input resistance r input would be change of vbe divided by the change of ib isn't it which is 1 over the slope and if i want to write it in terms of that so r input i could write it as this one i r input is change of vbe divided by change of ie let's say multiplied by change of ie so i have divided multiplied by ie okay to bring this into the form of re this was re right and this thing ie divided by ib is what it's beta plus one and beta is far greater than 1 so this implies what that beta plus 1 would approximately be equal to beta so this implies what that your r input would be approximately equal to beta times re where re was the resistance for the common base configuration and this would now be a higher value a much higher value a much higher value similarly the output resistance r output and where have i done it is our output is change of vce divided by the change of ic divided by change of ic yes yes which is approximately equal to infinity because the slope is equal to approximately zero over here and why is that because over there i explained the early effect over here let's say i have early effect ignored ic is beta times ib again you could say yes yes let me explain the the other region the this region uh, this region what is this region this one is the active region and how is this active that the current level is being modified if this is 0 let's say this is 0 0.2 this is 10 whatever is the values but this is the active region the current level is being amplified but what is this region what is this region so have a look have a look vce is equal to vce is equal to vcb plus vbe just remember vce is equal to vcb plus vbe now if we see e become negative that is over here and we see e is the reverse biasing potential so if we see e is equal to negative this implies that this will also forward bias the diode this would also forward bias the diode this would also forward bias the diode so this is this region this is this region that is the saturation region right yes but what about this region so this region have a look vcb is very vce is very small vce is very small so where is your vcb wait so have a look your vcb is equal to vce minus vbe so have a look in this region vce is very small if vce is very small so have a look vcb is having a negative value vcb is having a negative value and if vcb is having a negative value so although it is having some a smaller value but it is not yet able to reverse bias the diode completely it has not been able to reverse bias the diode completely and that is why we have this value of current fine if you want to understand it in another way so let me do it in one other way let me do it in one other way you have 
n plus p and n minus have a look over here n plus higher doping you have a p let's say you have lighter doping n minus okay this is your emitter base junction this is your collector base junction fine the built-in potential is what the built-in potential or the barrier potential i have already given you the formula is kt by e ln of na nd divided by ni squared na is the acceptor ion concentration nd is the donor ion concentration so this is highly doped the emitter base junction is highly doped and the collector base junction is lightly doped so which means that the barrier potential for the emitter base junction would be greater than the barrier potential for the collector base junction why because of the doping level yes it depends on na and nd so have a look the barrier potential for eb would be greater than the barrier potential of cb right so say that if we be for this is 0.7 volts so this would be 0.5 volts approximately for this one because of the doping level okay so from here what could you say if let's say this is your diode model right so if this was my collector base emitter so the so this would be 0.7 volts right let's say emitter is grounded so this would be plus minus 0.7 volts right this one would be a plus minus 0.5 volts base to collector 0.5 volts right yes so which means if this is grounded let's say so over here we would have a negative 0.5 volts over here you would have a if this is supposed to be grounded you would have a negative 0.5 over here negative 0.7 over here the difference over here at collector to emitter would come out to be a 0.2 volts the collector to emitter difference would come out to be 0.2 volts which is this voltage which is this voltage this 0.2 volts is this collector to emitter difference or voltage right yes so this one is your saturation region this one is your active region now the current in the saturation region is less than the current in the active region why so you basically know this why but let's say i just in a hurry i just tell you a little bit about it considering the npn transistor considering the NPN transistor again for instance or you have it over here you have the NPN transistor over here so have a look for the for the saturation mode what do you have the both of them would be forward biased wait a minute in the active mode let's say first so you have the emitter base junction is forward biased P is connected to plus this is negative right and this is reverse biased fine so what will happen the electric field has been established in this direction so now the electrons that will come from here over here will experience a force that would be in the same direction so which means that the reverse biasing in active mode e will do what will support electrons to move from the emitter to the collector isn't it like this and therefore the current would be greater right and similarly in the saturation mode in the saturation mode what happens is that the electric field now this would uh, this would also be this one in the saturation mode this one is forward biased and this one also is forward biased whatever is the case i am just in a hurry so i am now the electric field would be in this direction and now have a look if the electrons are moving in this direction so the electric field will oppose it electric field will oppose the flow of electrons from the emitter to the collector region and in that case what would happen so that is why i am telling you this thing that the ic in saturation case is less than ic in the active mode case and i hope that you have understood my point yes yes iceo is also greater than icbo i told you iceo is greater than icbo and why is that because of a factor it was being multiplied with a factor of beta plus one or beta so beta is quite a large factor 
I told you the reason over there. Let's say the characteristics of this common emitter. Where can we use it? Just getting longer. Let's get not bored. R in is high. Input resistance is high. Input resistance is high, which is what? Which is beta times RE. So RE with a smaller value multiplied with a bigger value, you get a bigger value. The output resistance is moderate. The output resistance is moderate. The third is that it has a high voltage and current gain. Voltage gain by AV, current gain by AI, right? So this means this can be used as an amp amplifier, right? The number four is that it has a high power gain. If it has high voltage and current gain, so it has high power gain, it can be used as a power amplifier, right? The fifth and the most important, or let's say the fifth is that the bandwidth is moderate which means that it cannot be used as a high frequency amplifier the sixth and the most important this that this is that this provides a phase shift of 180 degrees we will check it when we are analyzing it in the circuits we are basically in this video we are basically just trying to understand the basic the basic construction of the basic working principle when we understand it over there so when the input would be vm sine of omega t the output would come out to be vm sine of omega t plus 180 degrees and this is an important property of this one important property was that the common emitter configuration is mostly used as a current amplifier. The second is that the common emitter configuration provides a phase shift of 180 degrees. The only configuration that provides the phase shift of 180 degrees. Yes, and we'll see this in a greater detail. We'll see this in the upcoming chapters. Chapter number 4, chapter number 5. We'll be applying practical sinusoidal signals when we'll be getting output. So this we just saw, this was just a flavor, just a trailer, right? Yes, so that is it for this video. Again a longer video, but anyways, see in the next lecture with the remaining last common collector configuration. Till then, take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.